Hi everyone, welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. I'm so glad you tuned in today here on Pike TV. This is a very special episode. This episode is going to highlight one of our very super talented local artists, and I can't wait to share her and her work with you. Now, be sure though beforehand, if you have any desires to look at past tutorials, we have almost 100 episodes in the boot, so you just have to check it out. You can do it easily by going on YouTube at Pike TV 99. Search for that. There's playlists there. One of those is the art workshop, and under that you'll find many tutorials, also past um, student highlight episodes, and then also we have a few features that we do ever so often, every so many episodes we'll do something special. We're still thinking about what we might do for our 100th episode, so stay tuned for that too. A lot of good programming here on Pike TV, and I'm very honored to be a small part of that, and in a big way though, in episodes like today. So I'd like to welcome every, I'd like to welcome everyone to the show, and I'd especially want to welcome you to uh, meeting this super talented artist, uh, Georgia Lyons. Hey, Georgia, how are you? Good. So, Georgia, uh, we're here today to draw together, right? And I heard that you're super motivated by art and love art. Is that true? Yes. Uh, let's talk a little bit before we start. Like, tell me a little bit about, I don't know, let's start with, what's your favorite medium to use? Like, what's your, what to draw with? What do you like to work with? Pastel. Pastels. And what's so funny is I keep like a billion things in my kit you were looking at earlier all those stuff and I have like watercolor I have paint pens I have graphite I have ink and I was like just pick whatever you'd like to use and what did you say pastels pastels I don't have no pastels I guess what I'll have next time though pastels, pastels. well I will keep it in my bag and you know what probably no other artist will ever ask for them but I'll keep them in there and it'll, every time I'll, rem will, I'll remember our show um, but I'm really, really, really excited to meet you. And I want everybody out there to meet you too and see your cool work and what we're gonna do together. So how this works is we talk for a little bit like we're doing now and then you teach me how to draw something and then I teach you how to draw something, right? Okay, before we do that though, before we do that, I wanna tell everybody how old you are? I'm seven. Seven years old. And when I show you her work, this is a, se a seven-year-old creating work like this. I, if I showed you my work at seven, okay, I wouldn't show you my work at seven, number one, because you're way better than I was at seven. Uh, but you keep this up, it's hard telling where you're gonna go with it, okay? And there's one really a special aspect to this. Now we do tutorials a lot uh, here on the show, and we talk about color theory, and we talk a lot about arrangement, and your subject matter, and the placement and usage of color, warm and cold, and all in between. And it can be real complicated. It can be something that really a lot of artists who've worked their whole lives can't really get a nap for, you know? It's kind of like they just don't get it, me being one of them, uh, but I keep trying. But looking at your work, the first thing that came to mind when I saw it is that you really have a big knack on color. You use color really well. How did you, what, what did you start drawing with color with? Um, I think it was first crayons. Crayons? Now, have you ever um, went all the way to using like acrylics and stuff? Uh, I an example of this paint, one though. right here yeah. uh, was used with acrylics. So let's bring this in and let's look at it. Now, um, where do you go to school? Johns Creek. Johns Creek, and being seven year old, you are in what grade? S Sixth grade. No. Fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Fourth grade. No. Third grade. Mm -hmm. Second grade. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I had to go all the way down because I didn't know, but I started too high. But anyway, uh, second grade, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the second grader doing this work. This is unbelievable. So this is this is wonderful. So this is what is the title of this of this piece here? Do you have a name for it? Uh, I call it the galaxy. That's a good name for it because that's what I thought of when I looked at it. I thought of stars. So tell me more about it. What'd you use to do that with? Um. Uh, so one of those like thin fluffy brushes, I don't know what they're thin called. Thin fluffy brush, that work, that's, that's okay, that's good. Was it, so you used fan? a big brush? A fan brush? Yeah. A fan brush to do this, and what kind of paint? S acrylics. So I took a small paintbrush and I individually painted the colors right here, mm -hmm. and then I swooped it right here, and then I dipped it in the water, and then I got these colors, mm -hmm. and I kept on doing it all the way down. Well, that is, it's really, really good for a lot of reasons, because you've went from this use of this lighter color here, and then you've gotten, a, as you went over here, just increasingly darker, but in the middle, breaking it all up, 
you have these two straps that kind of lighten everything up. It divides the two, but makes it whole as one too. So I love it. It could be a planet too. You know that, right? That could be a, totally be a planet out there. But I, this is really pretty. I love it. I won't show the flip side. Do you want to show the flip side? No. Yes, okay. Maybe. Yes. Okay, good. This I absolutely love because I see a lot in there. I think I messed up on it. I think you did amazing on it. Because up here at the top, I mean, now you don't have to say you see, everyone's gonna see something a little different because that's the cool thing about abstract art. But what I see personally, I see uh, a person with a large, large, like, like <laughs> old Victorian hairstyle. Mm -hmm. And you, you've got like flowers out here and they're sitting in this chair by water and they have themselves a little, little cold drink there and the sun coming down, right? Maybe, no? Mm, no, I was trying, I was <laughs> trying to uh, do one of my doodles on wood mm -hmm. and I ended up doing that. Well, I, I love it, I really do. Let's look at some more of your work though. I'll flip this over if you want, make you a little more comfortable, <laughs> put this at the top, but I think it's amazing. Now you also do character drawings, right? Yes. So this one here you did specifically right in today, that's a cat. Oh, yes. Tell me about it. What did you use to do it, and why did you do this? I had to use crayons. Okay. So, I I took an orange and I colored the whole thing orange, mm -hmm. and then I took a brown and went over it. It's really good. It's hard to blend with uh, cray crayons, isn't it? Yes. It's very hard to blend. I like the little banners at the top. So we we have a couple more characters here. You have a duck, and you have um, also a mouse, right? It's Minnie Mouse and Daisy. And Daisy, Daisy which I knew that. I, could, I totally saw that. And I do think that this face, the face that you use with the eyes are the perfect for Minnie. The big, black, round, solid eyes. This is also crayon. This is crayon too? Mm -hmm. Both of those? Well, that's a, it's really good. Let's flip back a little bit more here. Um, we don't want to show the pig, right? So we'll go this way. I'm gonna go this way. Uh oh, you don't wanna land no, on the no, donut, no, do you? No, 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 okay, no. I'm trying not to. How about here? Yeah. Okay, this is cool. This is really cool. So, what is this here? What'd you use to make that? This uh, was crayon. This is my me and my best friend. We just discovered that we were cousins. Really? Because we just thought we were really good friends. That's and if you look closely, uh, I drew like crisscrosses because our hair is braided together. Nice. What's her name? Uh, her name is Blakely. You give her a shout out, hi Blakely. Yes. Very cool, very cool. She's definitely gonna watch the show, I imagine. She is my best BFF. That's, that's wonderful. Does she like art too? Mm, kind of. Kind of. So tell me about this one now. This is crayon? Yes. And this is crayon too? Yes. Okay, tell me a little bit more about this though. This is kind of cool. Uh, I don't know what the black thing was. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I thought braids, but maybe not. Uh, this was brown hair and purple streaks. Purple streaks in it? Oh, cool. And I was cool. going with candy cane. <laughs> candy cane? I could see that. I really, really would want to show. Let me see. Let me pull this to the front real fast because there's something here. That Look one's my that. favorite. That is so pretty. So there's a butterfly and I, these were supposed to be like um, the, I can't. Like a butterfly on, on, like, on certain flowers? Like when it's turning into a butterfly. Like oh, the, the uh, cocoon? Yes. Uh, the cocoon, the larva turning into a cocoon mm. than a butterfly, right? I think so. This was supposed to be a rug and this is someone's desk. I see that. Is the and the butterfly is is that in a, it's it's in a jar of some sort? Or yeah, it, and know? there's holes in the top so mm -hmm. it can breathe. I see that, hundred percent. But look at the color. She has light green, which goes into almost like a aqua blue, but not there. And this is crayon. No, color this pencil. is colored yeah. pencils I got from Five Below. Very uh, cool. I think they are very very. Um, they're very, they're very, very not expensive, mm -hmm. but it comes with all kinds of shades. And that's a good thing. Like when I was growing up, there were no stores around here that had many art supplies, but now all over town and around, uh, there's a lot of stores with all kinds of good options for art supplies. Do so you want to draw some now? 
This is great work. And we're going to use color a little bit because as soon as I saw your work, normally what we would do, normally what we would do is we would um, uh, maybe just use... Just draw it? Yeah, just draw it. But when I saw your work, and we'll put your pencil right in the middle. How's that? When I saw your work, I knew immediately that we have to use some sort of color today. So we're going to share this watercolor palette here, okay? We each got an eraser. I like to talk about materials, too, because materials are important. Um, what happened with, is that I, I, I never really knew a lot about how artists made stuff. I just look at what they made. And um, one of the things that I noticed was they don't talk about materials a whole lot, you know? Um, and I would definitely want to do that. So today we're going to be using, now I'm going to be using a traditional brush for the watercolor. She's going to be using a refillable brush pen, and this is just has a aqua reserve here for water, and what you do is you just fill that up and squeeze it, right, and you get it. I have one of them at my house because for my uh, birthday, I got one and a watercolor set. I used it all the time. Did you? It's fun. To, th those are great to use. They really are. I'm going to grab a pencil out because that's one thing I forgot to get out of my kit here. Alrighty, so I'm going to let you use this um, carbide pencil, okay? And I'm going or carbon pencil, and I'm going to use this uh, same thing, but it's just uh, should come out of there in a minute, hopefully. We're also going to be using That's just a water. A pencil? Yeah, what's this? So you just keep pushing it, and theoretically, <laughs> theoretically. I have one of those kind of like that. Yeah? It's a pen, yeah. and it has like a. Mechanical uh, pencil? string sort of? of lead and then you put it in oh, and then you yeah. click it and then it comes out and then you write with it. I know what you're talking about. I'm probably going to end up using this little pencil here. How's that? So I'm using just a regular pencil. We have kneaded erasers here that we're going to be using. And then in a little bit too, just, just as if we want to, we each got a black, um, these are um, Kuratake pens, Japanese um, felt pins, and then we have a few markers here at the top. Maybe we'll use those too, okay? So let's get started. I w I'm really excited about learning how to draw this with you. So you're go what are you going to be drawing, uh, teaching me to draw today? I'm going to draw an owl. Okay. What I usually do, I already told you this, but it's okay. I take one of my mama's food mats and I place it on the TV and I copy off of it. That is smart. That is really smart. You know what? Um, some students will actually go, and they, it's called a light box, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a box with lights under it, and you put you put whatever on top of it. I have that. You have that? Yes. I, use I that. have that. Mom said no. It's cheating. Well, well, it it, it 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 it's not when you're when you're sketching your own work and then putting the sheets over that and refining it, right? Right. So, all right. So let's let's let's, go, let's jump into the drawing. Maybe we got to draw big now so everyone can see it. We'll draw it first in pencil. We'll outline it in ink, and then we'll use colors. Does that sound good? Okay, I'm following your lead now, George. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all you teaching me now. I'm ready to go, if you're ready. Usually, I would like to start out with the ears. With the ears? We've got to draw real big, okay? So maybe try to draw up, maybe higher up on the paper a little bit. It's okay. I just want, you to be, I want everybody to be sure and see it. If you can, start about up, up about right here, okay? Like where my pencil is. There we go. If it's not erasing very good, it's okay. We could, we're going to draw in everything in a little bit. Can you start that high? Okay, this is one ear. Down, okay. I want to wait and see how you draw this first, and I'm going to do it. I get this out of your way. Up, down, again. Okay. One ear. <laughs> down. <laughs> Oh, we use erasers a lot, believe me. <laughs> Over, like that, right? And then we use this, this here is a little, this here, this here is kind of just a reverse, right? There you go. And then you got the middle part in the middle, right? Like that, cool. Uh, wait a minute, did you bring it down from the top like that? Okay, all right, I think I got it. Okay, now what are we doing? Is this the head? It's one side of the head. And the other side, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the same thing. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna bring it down like this more. So now we got the ears, and we have the the shape of the head, right? Now what do we do? The body. Very cool. So it just comes down and around. 
forms the body like this, like that, and then like this, right? Okay. Okay, my body's a little lopsided. Hold on a second. Now we're gonna draw over this in a minute. I think it looks great. Well, thank you, Georgia. I see just, you're, you're your own, you know how it is. When you work, look at your own work, sometimes you're real hard on yourself as an artist. I am, are you that way too sometimes? Compared to yours, compared to mine, I think yours is a little better. No, no, it's not better. It's that you're teaching me how to draw this, and maybe I've made, made circles longer than you have. It's just that, really, that's all it is. Now, watch. You're going to do the eyes next, or the nose? Uh. Yours looks great. You're going to give it something to stand on? Okay. Yeah, it is standing on something, isn't it? Those little toes. Let's see here. My dad's coming in the middle of the show. All right, there we go. There go down. They got toes, right? Okay, go straight across, and another straight across, and then. Do owls have toes? They have to have toes, don't they? They like have claws, kind of like chickens do. Okay, mine look like toes, but that's okay. All right, now we got to do wings, right? Or what you do. I'm telling you what's next. You tell me what's next. I'm so sorry. I usually like to do the wings. Okay. These are a little bit skinny. I usually make them bigger, but... It's okay. You know what's the hardest part for me when these types of drawings is getting those eyeballs just perfect on each side? Can, uh, I, can I show you something I like to do? I usually use scissors. Scissors? I take scissors, I take the round part, and then I just trace That's the inside. That's a brilliant idea. That's a brilliant idea. Here's what I do, and this you can, what I do is I like to very lightly sketch a line right down the middle. Now I'm gonna erase this line in a shortly, in a minute, okay? That line's gonna be gone. But what this line does, it helps to tell me exactly where one half is and the other half is. Then all I have to do, there you go, just a line. Now, right in the middle of that line, you can figure out kind of where you're gonna place your nose at. Now you go ahead and draw your nose first, then I'll draw mine. What does it look like? An upside down triangle First, sort of? I want to do the, the eyeballs. eyes. Okay, 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 okay. And see, now you know exactly where to place those eyeballs, and they're right in the middle, see? Good job. Okay. Let's see now. One eyeball here, eyeball here, right? Okay. Then you're going to draw the pupils in there. What are those, just two circles? They're circles. the highlight of the eyes. Okay, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Okay. Oh, and the nose. You got the nose right in the middle. Is that where you want me to put mine? Like right here? Like that somewhere? Okay. Are we about ready to put a little color? What do we need to do next? Oh, you're putting like little jagged lines in there to represent the feathers, aren't you? That's smart. Okay, a couple more there. Yeah, that's a good idea. This is like the feathers on the coming down off the neck, right? And more. I than see that. this oh. on all of my uh, owl stuffed animals. I like that. You're adding to our example. That's great. Going down like that here. There we go. Excellent job. Do we, have, do we want to put the little things that come out to the ears or not worry about that? Mm. Not worry about it? Okay, I don't, need, I don't think we need to worry about it either. Now the fun part. You grab your pen, and we're going to trace over our lines. This makes it real nice and bold. Also, guess what you can do during this phase? If there's a line you don't like, you can change it. So let's say if there's something that's just not set, setting well with you, you can, you can go in and change it. So you don't have to trace over everything. I like to always trace over in ink, and then at the very end, once I do that, guess what I do? You color it. I color it. Right before I color it, though, I erase all the pencil lines. So all we're left with, see, is the black. Okay? So now we got the pupils. Yeah, your style is very good. I love your style. More than anything, though, your color work is just, is just outstanding. Um, when did you remember, what's the earliest you remember drawing? How old were you? Uh, I think I started out when I was three. Three? Do you have any of your drawings from when you were three? Uh, I don't think so. No? 
um, whenever you started out drawing, what would you, uh, what do you, what, what do you like to draw today? Like if you could sit down any time, given any moment, you like to draw for your friends, or you like to draw like characters, or what do you like to draw? I would like Nature. to, Sorry. I like <laughs> to draw with like characters and me and my friends. Yeah. Well, I think that if you keep working with color, plus your mom's an artist, so that's great. So she, she, um, she gets to show you different different techniques. Plus, I guess you have a lot of access to a lot of art supplies, right? Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Your, mom, your mom and I have been friends for a very long time. Did you know that? Yes. <laughs> she was like, you met my best friend <laughs> on com at the Comic-Con. Well, yeah, we were. 25 years. I'm not aging us at all. Sorry, Brittany. But. Okay, now what we need to do is, oh wait, you're still inking. I'm, I've been inking while you were telling me that. I'm sorry. I really like your pencil, by the way, too, that you did. I drew that. Mom couldn't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. She was like, which one was the machine-made one? <laughs> well, you did a great job. Once we're going to start using this color, I'm going to go ahead and use this mister. And all this is is just a little bottle with water. It's a sprayer. And when you have watercolor cakes like this, now you share with me, you, you dip yours under the sink, right? Mm -hmm. Just get those cakes wet. But this is, we don't have, well, we, if we had a sink, we could do it. But since... We're just here in the studio. We will use this. And this is good too, because if you, like if one color's really absorbing that water a lot, you can hit that color rah, a lot more, you know? That's what I like it for. There we go. It's pretty good and moist now, so we can do it. All right, I am ready to add color when you're ready. Wait, oh, I almost forgot. I'm gonna take my eraser now. Good thing about these needed erasers, to get them a little bit flat like this, you can roll around almost like Play-Doh. You can take it and just get rid of all those pencil lines. See that? I was like, I thought he was going to erase it. <laughs> yeah, I almost forgot. That was close. Now, since I'm using a brush, and you're using what, what I call aqua brushes, um, I have to use water, right? I have to keep dipping my brush in water. So I have a little tiny reservoir over here of water that I'm going to use. And I probably should have told you to press down a little light whenever you're drawing that. I'm sorry, but you should be able to get rid of all, most of your ink line, uh, your um, pencil lines. Be careful a little bit there where you have that large, um, the large black line here. If you erase over it, if it's not dry yet, it'll smudge. See how mine smudged some? Let's make sure it's dry. How you can tell is just take your finger and go back and forth. See how I smudged mine a little bit? That's okay. Okay, here's my water. Okay, we've used our pencils. We've used our eraser. We used our marker, and now we're getting to go into color. So I'm going to follow your lead on this because you have, if that one isn't big, is big enough, you, we could switch out. It's up to you. If you, this one's a little bit bigger. There we go. Let's do that. Now, we don't, um, uh, and wanna, we we want to put highlights of color in there. I think. Uh oh, trace over his eyeball right in the middle, or her <gasps> eyeball. Oh. <laughs> I almost forgot. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, oh man, we gotta. There you go. Okay. Now I'm going to follow your lead. Whatever color you use, I'm going to use, okay? All right, let's see. Where are we going first? Dark, we're going to use some brown. Okay. And where are we going with this brown? Nice. See that? Already pulling that nice gray tone from it. I love that. You may want to use this right here and just get your brush a little bit wet too while we're doing the color. One thing about using those aqua brushes is they, 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 um, you're, when you're used to using the aqua brush, when you go to using a dry brush, you, if I find myself sometimes squeezing the dry brush, I'm like, wait a minute, uh, that don't work. And then uh, you're going all the way up the side with it, like that. See how nice and dark that is coming in? That's really pretty. Are you going to go light any, or are you going to take that dark all the way in? I think I'll do like dark and light. Okay, now at any time you'd rather use this aqua brush, you tell me, okay? If, you, if you've, you're doing a great job with that one, but you may have to get get your brush wet. Don't forget your get your brush wet again. And you're going around the edges, aren't you? First, or you're just going from one side to the other. Which what are you uh, one do? side to the other. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to keep going then. Now in school, since I like art, and I remember when I was your age. I would like to shout out to one of my best friends. Absolutely. Uh, Who's that? That's her name is Kira. Kira? She 
she's been wanting to she's like oh my gosh you're going on tv today <laughs> that's wonderful everybody everybody all your friends excited about it no they know about it they're going to watch it yeah good and elena mm -hmm. she's my best friend i'll move this down here for you, you don't want to forget the water well that's good that's really good i was getting ready to ask you in school since you like art i remember being your age the question i have for you is do you ever get requests from your classmates to draw stuff for you for them no. It'll happen. It'll happen. Trust because me. they've never saw my artwork. What? Are you serious? Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, I can relate to that. Uh, when I took it to the first graders that, and I was drawing in front of them, mm -hmm. they were like, oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> well, so the first graders, see, um, they when they look at your art, they're, they, they can't even understand how in the world someone can do that, right? When I look at someone like Jim Lee, or if I look at Alex Ross, or if I look at a, um, um, let's say, a Melinda Trimble, um, those artists, when I look at them, I'm like, I don't know how they do that, okay? And those are all comic graphic novel artists and stuff. But so, so my point with that is, as you go through life and you continue to draw and you practice a lot, you're gonna to get to the point too where you're drawing like those artists I just mentioned, and there's gonna be artists like me going, how in the world do they do that? So I just don't want you to, like, you know, don't be discouraged. If you find, try to draw something exactly the way you see it and it, in your mind it doesn't turn out exactly the way you're, what you're looking at. That happens to me all the time, but I never get discouraged. I'm like, Good. oh, man. Good. And I'm like, I can do it. You can, and you will. And I kept retrying. You have to. That's the thing. So there's this weird thing that as we color this and as we, because we have a lot of brown to cover, so we're going to talk as we do this a little bit. But I've been to a lot of schools, right? I've seen a lot of students' artwork. And I've talked to a lot of students about art. One of the, and this is all here locally. And when I work for this organization... Oh, I also have another shout-out. Her kay. name is Serenity. Serenity. Hey, Serenity. And Harley. Harley. Hi, Harley. Well, that's you have a lot of friends. That's wonderful. There's also even more that I want to squeeze in. <laughs> but well, as you think about it, we'll talk a little bit. I don't more. really think I can squeeze them all in, but I'm going to well, try. Okay, that's no problem. But um, in grades, when I talk to students, so the higher up in grade level that we go, uh, when I ask the students, who all in here likes art, the last hands go up or like to draw. So when you're dealing with second and third grade and you ask, who all likes to draw? Like everybody's hand in the whole room goes up. You ask someone in 12th grade, who all in here likes to draw? You may have one or two or three, depending. And I have a theory on why that is. I think that when we show our work to other people, especially when you're in younger grades, kids can be a little, a little hard on you, right? And um, they may say something to discourage you. And that discourages students from working anymore and continuing to practice. Because anything you do, you have to practice to get better at it. And so my biggest advice to young students is, no matter what, if your artwork isn't turning out the way that you want it to, it will eventually if you keep at it. All those students whose hands maybe were, were up in high school, if they had kept drawing um, all the way back in third grade, fourth grade, whatever, then you know they would all be in a place where they're comfortable saying, yeah, I enjoy art. That's just a theory I have, but it could be totally wrong. My head is almost covered. Mine's, is, mine's not as dark as yours. This aqua brush, it doesn't hold as, enough, uh, as much pigment and as much color as, um, as, as the dry brushes do, e even though you, we're using basically the same amount of water and all. And you run out of water, we're good because I have a water bottle over here. Are we going to go down the sides brown too? Yeah. Down this way? Yeah, uh, okay. the wings are also dark brown. Okay, so if you're following along at home, and let's say you don't have watercolor, they could do the same thing we're doing with colored pencils, crayons, or whatever, right? Yeah. My, um, if you have pastels, I would most recommend doing it because crayons are hard to blend, and pastels are kind of easy, kind of hard. Mm -hmm. They're not too bad. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you going to do for the, uh, the eyes? Are they going to be color? Yeah. Can I choose any color for my eyes? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to follow your lead though and everything else, but I'm going to do a little bit of something here. I'm going to go with this blue. 
everybody at home that's watching this and following along, they can do any color eye they want. Good. See, that lets people personalize their owl. And if you do create one at home, let me encourage everyone, send your artwork in to PikeTV99 at Gmail, and we'd love to share your creations. It would be wonderful to see some other students work, or anyone's work in general, here on the show too. So be sure and send in your artwork. What I'm doing here is I'm cleaning out my brush a little bit. I grabbed some color I wasn't supposed to yet. <laughs> I grabbed some of this right here, this, uh, this, this, I guess a burnt umber or something like that. I think it's actually just, no, it's more yellow. But yours is looking very nice, very nice solid line, color. It's looking really good. I'm just really interested in what you're gonna be doing for the, for the body here though. You're gonna use a lighter color for that? Or you think you're gonna, you're gonna do blue too? Very cool. Yeah, that dark blue, that works real well. I like to use blue eyes because any color eye catches me off in my work. I'm yeah. like, uh, not so good. Those blue eyes really pop on the screen too. Um, for what about the, the body though? How do we how do we even work with that? I'm not rushing you at all, I'm just, I'm just wondering. I think I wanna use this one. Okay, that'll work. It's a little bit great. Why don't you test it out here first to make sure. Is that? Yeah. Do you want to use that one? Okay. I'm going to follow your lead, okay? I use a little bit more water in that. And anybody that colors out of the lines, even I do that. And I'm still practicing. And when you color out of the lines, you're like, ugh. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You can just erase it or you can start over. Just keep encouraging yourself. That's great advice. That really is great advice. I think that is, uh, that's real important. You know, it really is. Especially for young students who are getting into art. And, um, like, we, like we've been talking about, you can get discouraged pretty easy. So not giving up is real important, right? You don't want to give up. When that's you, a, go ahead. I have advice. When you give up you're, and you're like, you can't do it, other people that don't give up they end up doing a lot better things in life. You're absolutely, I think you're onto something there. I really do, Georgia. That, that's, some, that's some wise, sage advice coming, coming from how old are you? Seven? Seven. See? Um, basically what I heard you say is that, you know, if, if you give up on something because you can't do it the way you want to when you start out, you'll never do it the way you want to, right? And there'll be other people who do. Is that what you're saying? That's also like my dad. Okay. When his friends were out partying, right. he was studying. Oh my goodness, see. What's your dad's name? His name is John. John. And a shout out to your dad too? Yes. There you go. And a shout out to my mom. She's a very good artist. Oh, that's really sweet. That's sweet. Your mom is a good artist. Uh, let's see now. See how much lighter my color is because of this aqua brush? Yes. But I'm still following along though. I'm trying to trying to get in there and get that color. What about the beak though? Shouldn't it be a yellow uh, or something? Yeah, um, I'm gonna color that um, in a second. Now this one right here, this color is that. Just to let you know, just in case you wanna use it. I know it's up to you, but you got other op options. You can do anything you want, but that's the color I used though for that. Ooh, that's an interesting color. This color right here, on the side, I want to do something like creative, okay. like I did with my other drawings. Very so cool. So I'm going to take right some green, Okay. and I'm going to go ahead and make it fluffy right here. Oh, I like that a lot, a lot. I like that. See, that, this is what I was interested in seeing you do here with this color. I'd like to see how you use it. Are you going to mix anything with it? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm just gonna watch you right here for this part, okay? I'm not gonna try to follow this. I wanna see how you do this, but I may go ahead and color my beak a little bit. There we go, put a little bit of orange in there. Maybe the toe is the same. And if you would like, like I'm doing, I'm going to draw a tree over here. So, cool, okay, so let's see it. So it isn't just like one little thing right okay, there. that sounds good. I'm gonna try to use some of this color. I'm gonna try to do something more. So here. what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw see, a tree. I can't do what you're doing. Tree. I'm all over the place with this brush, see? It's not really getting it, is it? It's gotta keep on trying, right, Georgia? Mm -hmm. Anybody at home 
when they can't do it, I, I, most people, when they see my artwork, they're like, oh, I can't do that. How are you in the world are you doing that? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I never give up. I think that's sage advice from a seven-year-old to the entire world. I think that, that is something that everyone should hear and needs to hear because, you know, I think that we have some amazing talent in our region. And that's one of the goals here at Pike TV. We want to show that talent off, and especially with with, with uh, kids and the younger younger uh, artists in the region. Um, in my personal opinion, while we're just kind of drawing together and talking, um, I think there needs to be more voices in the publishing industry and in creative arts uh, I, from here. I've saw tons of creative people's work, mm -hmm. and they say it's not good enough. Now I'm like, that's even better than mine. <laughs> and they're like, nope. Well, just, just the, you, I think that you know, you know being an artist, a young artist, that we can be kind of hard on ourselves, can't we? Yes. Yeah. That's but, a cool tree, by the way. I really like how you're just kind of using swatches of color and leaving white in there a little bit to kind of show the streaks of bark there. It's very well done. I do this with every tree, but I use Crayola or crayons or sure. color pencils. Sure. That looks really good. I'm glad you don't just have a straight tree either. It's got a bend to it. And that's a limb coming off, right? I see what you're doing now. Okay, keep going. I, I, I'm, I'm just watching now. I'm going to check out this. You can see that it's dry, and yeah. the dry look makes it look cool. It does make it look cool. Are you going to use some more different colors in the leaves over there? Yes. Okay. You need some more water? Let me pour you a little bit more water. Let me refill your water up a little bit here. Yeah, it's really interesting to see young artists, how they, especially artists who have a good sense of color like you do. I like to see the process of it. It's all that brown. Look at all that brown in that water. It's okay, though. It kind of blends in with your other colors, making it kind of whole, you know? But if you few uh, leaves up there at the top. It's looking really good. So you don't use watercolor at home a lot? Mm, not really. You're going to start maybe? After Probably. this maybe? I think you should because I mean you really do a good job with it. Especially if you love color. You get all these options. It's not that messy. You could take this anywhere with you. Do you keep a sketchbook? Yes. Do you take it with you? Not really. Sometimes I take like tons of sheets of paper in my book bag when I'm yeah. going on vacation because usually they don't come with paper right. on vacation and they have like these giant desks. Right. Desks. Well, I tell you what, I hate to cut you short on this one, but let's flip this over because we're running out a little bit out of time and let's, let me draw together and let's, let's us create something together. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to pull my sheet off here and what we'll do is we'll set it to the side. You just put yours down the floor to the side there and let it make sure it doesn't get, there you go. We'll set that off to the side a little bit. Let me put it over here with mine. Then we'll pull it back up at the end of the show, okay? One second. Well, I'm going to try my best to, to um, draw a frog with you. Does that sound okay? All right, let me reach me that over there. If you don't care, we can pull up this example. Thank you very much. Got to have an example to go by, just like you mentioned at the beginning, right? And I have one right here. I can pull it up. Okay, frog. This is going to be a, hopefully a cute frog by the time we're done, okay? Now, I'm going to show you my style. I'm going to let you use this pencil because it's easier to erase with this one, okay? And I'm going to show you this is my style. This is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. This is just my take on it, okay? Are you ready for a frog? All right, let's do it. First thing I want you to do, right in the middle of your page right here, I want you to draw an oval real lightly on your, on your paper. Don't press down real hard. Let's draw an oval, a big giant oval, okay? All right, once you have that giant oval, on this side over here, I want you to put a circle. Best you can, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Then over here, another circle. See how they're overlapping right there? Kinda looks like Mickey Mouse right now, but we're hopefully not gonna be Mickey Mouse soon. Now, what we're gonna do is down here at the bottom, this is smaller than this oval, okay? Watch this. You're gonna make a shape that looks like a pyramid with soft edges. Look at that, almost like an egg. See that? Triangle with a little bit of soft edges. There you go. 
Good, it's gonna be over, it overlaps a little bit. Now we're gonna worry about the legs and feet just yet, okay? Let's focus just on the face for now, all right? So now I'm gonna press down a little harder this time and inside of here, before we do that, grab your eraser, here you go. And what I want you to do is where this overlaps, get rid of it, okay, inside the circle. Let's get rid of that. Okay, excellent. Now, here's what we're gonna do next. Watch, this circle is kind of down at the bottom, see that? It's another circle inside of that circle. Look where I'm placing them. Place it right down here at the bottom. Okay, now this is kind of all over the place right now, and that's okay. Because what we're gonna do is now we're gonna put, put some pupils in there. We're gonna put a little bit of eye shine, the way you did. I'm gonna draw two little circles first. One here, one here. And then we'll put that big old pupil right here behind them. See that? Look what I'm doing here. I'm going right behind that one and right behind this one. See that? Now this doesn't look like a whole lot just yet, but it will. Because what we're gonna do now is come down here on the face. I like your frog already, it looks good. Well, we're gonna come down here on the face, and we gotta give their frog a smile. So here's what I like to do. I start over here on my oval, watch what I'm gonna do. I put a little hash mark right here. See that hash mark I made there? And a hash mark over here. Now the reason I do that is it gives me a starting and stopping point for my line that makes my smile up. Instead of going in and trying to draw it all the way across, I have a starting and end point. And now what I can do is do this, watch. The smile comes down, up a little bit, and back up again. See that? Exactly, good job. All right, let's go ahead and fill the face side a little more. Now this is just an oval right now, right? Let's bring a line coming down on each side here and here. Okay, bring it back in a little bit and then We'll seal it off, just trace over your oval all the way around the, the bottom. Are these the cheeks? Yeah, the cheek, there you go, that's it. That's it, okay, good job. Now, we give it two little nostrils, one hole here and one hole here. Now, if you notice from our example, which the viewers can't see, it has these little eyelids that make up the bottom. I don't have to worry about that too much, I don't think. Um, I may put a little bit here, just to kinda fill it in, but you don't have to worry about that too much, okay? All right, what I wanna do before we, before we draw the body, is I wanna take our pen, and I wanna go ahead and trace over the head before we ever, ever draw the body, okay? So now we're gonna trace over just the lines we wanna keep, here, like right here, then the pupil. Your frog looks really cool though, by the way. I really like to see young artists work too because every young artist have their own, it's like their own style. It's, a, it's, it's a something that, it's so funny that as you get older as an artist, the only thing that folks really want to see is an individual style. But you lose it as you get older because the only thing you try to do as an artist is draw like other people. But the only thing, that's what you try to get back your whole life is getting back to your age right now and having your own style. I'm that's not real, I try to draw like other people, but sometimes I want to draw like me. Oh yeah, that's the thing. If you could keep drawing like you, it's hard telling where you'll go with art. If that's something you want to do one day as a job. Uh, I'm going to take my mom's job. She's an you art are? teacher. You're gonna teach art? Mm -hmm. I think you'd be a great teacher based on what we've done today, I really do. I think you'd be a great, wonderful teacher. So see how I've got the eyelids here now? Kind of just hanging out. And then we got the cheeks, like you said, down in. Got her smile here. Is there anything else you wanna share um, about maybe, you know, what, what kind of art artist that you like or what, what sort of, uh, uh, comics you read, or are there any specific animated movies you like a whole lot? Uh, I don't really like anime, but I do like TV shows. Yeah. Well, we're going to finish up here by just drawing the body real simple. So check this out now, okay? Once you get that traced out, I'm sorry, I'm rushing you. You go ahead and finish that eyeball up over there, and then we'll start, okay? I don't want to rush you too much. There you go. Look at those cheeks. Okay, now the body, watch this now, okay? 
So your body, um, you've already got this oval down here that you traced, right? So mm -hmm. I'm gonna do the same thing. So we've got this right here coming down. Now watch, it's real simple. All we're gonna do is just do two lines coming straight down from this. One, two, okay? With your pencil, go ahead and do that too. Two lines coming down. See, one, two, look. One, and then a second one there. Okay, once you have those two lines. I look think what, these are supposed to be the legs. They are, what's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw these little shapes coming out like this, like fingers. See what I did there? I'm only gonna do three, okay? Then do the same thing on this side. Three little shapes, one, two, and three. And the only thing now left to do is the back legs. The back legs are super simple too. Let me see how far you've got. And have you gotten the other one yet? Almost, okay. Now three little shapes. Good. What I like to do is add these to uh, the legs. That's a good idea. So now I've got this shape, it kind of comes out and back down. And now, there you go. And now we're gonna draw one and two. Two of these right there, okay? Same thing over here. The shape comes out and back in. One and two. Now, let's trace over that part and we've got us a frog hopefully here. We'll trace over your eyeball too at the top once you're ready, okay? Make sure you get that one. I saw that one little eyeball up there kinda all lonely. And where's my ink at? There we go. And there we go for the hand. So you're gonna teach art one day, huh? Yes. That sounds really good. It really does. And you can tell all your students what you told us earlier, right? About not giving up? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And all of you, if you want to be an art teacher, I advise to tell them like that. Yeah. That also. Well, I think I think you have some great advice, and it has been absolutely wonderful drawing with you today. I want, be sure and trace that eyeball. I don't know why it's bothering me so bad. I don't want you to miss it. <laughs> I keep looking over and say, don't miss it. Please don't miss it. You're not going to miss it, are you? No. You know it's up there, don't you? Yeah. There we go. Excellent job. So we'll show this in a minute along with the two uh, other drawings that we did. But I want to tell you something. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. I think uh, Georgia has offered sage advice for anyone listening. You want to give it to him one more time before we, before we stop? Uh, don't give up. And when someone tells you something bad about your artwork, that's probably because they're sad that they can't draw like you. Wow. So I'm telling you, I, I've, this has been sage advice today on top of getting a cool tutorial in your art style. So I don't want you to give up either. I'm not going to give up. And uh, maybe we could do this again one day where I come on your show. How's that sound? Cool? High five? High five. Thank you, Georgia, for participating and uh, being on the show, okay? We'd like to also thank Georgia's uh, family for allowing her to be on the show um, and everyone involved with uh, fostering talent like this in schools. As you know, art is declining, and we, wanted, we don't want that to happen. We want the opposite to happen uh, because students get a lot out of art. It's a way for them to express themselves, to get out things they can't talk about, maybe don't know how to talk about, and sometimes they just want to have fun and just make something. So I encourage you all to do that too. Um, if you feel the inclination to do something with art, do it. There's never an age where you're too old to start learning how to do this at all. So thanks again to Georgia and her family for having her on. Um, we really appreciate it. On behalf, behalf of Pike TV, uh, Christopher Epling and the Art Workshop, and until next time, say keep drawing. One, two, three. Keep, keep drawing. drawing.